are helping to reach with the gospel through your monthly support. You'll get this distinctive Mishpuka mug reminding everyone that you are one of Sid Roth's Mishpuka, a part of the family with a supernatural Jewish heart. Receive 35 powerful healing scripture cards so you can meditate on God's promises for you and your entire family. Open the door to the supernatural and you'll find your first monthly mentoring DVD. It includes a mentoring guide with questions to help you fully absorb the content and for you to write your personal thoughts. You'll hear teaching on subjects including healing, how to receive your breakthrough, how to work with angels, seeing into the glory realm, prophecy, and much more. You'll get a special membership key code that will allow you to access a web link, giving you exclusive access to behind the scenes mentoring seminars filmed at our International Media and Mentoring Center. Also included is your first bi-monthly newsletter and so much more. Mishpuka Gold and Halutzin members receive this special DVD, How to Walk in Revival Every Day, plus this daily prayer of cleansing and consecration. Halutzin members receive their own beautiful distinctive mug, plus this beautiful Halutzin menorah pendant and keychain. Don't miss out on getting your own mentoring kit from Sid Roth's School of the Supernatural. You can get this incredible kit with your first gift of only $25 plus $25 shipping and handling. If you sign up using our Angel Express, we'll waive the $25 shipping fee. Call or you can send your check for $50 to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number P9013N or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. You are watching ISN. The It's Supernatural Network. Welcome to an It's Supernatural Network exclusive worldwide broadcast event. Live from Dawsonville, Georgia, the North Georgia Revival with Pastor Todd Smith. During Christ Fellowship's 21-day fast, God gave Pastor Todd Smith a vision of the church's baptistry. The baptism pool was full, and there was a strip of fire on top of the water. On February 11, 2018, the Holy Spirit suddenly made His presence known in their service. Since that moment, nothing has been the same. The water has become a contact point, a place of supernatural encounter with God Himself. Multitudes have been healed of long-term physical ailments in the waters of His church's baptistry in in Dawsonville, Georgia. Testimonies of people being healed continue to amaze even the skeptics. Find out more about the unprecedented miracles God is pouring out as His glory presence is being made manifest. You will find out that miracles are being poured out from heaven upon planet Earth in an unprecedented way. You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Next, a recent It's Supernatural TV program. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest says God has assigned a good purpose for everyone, uh, that includes you, but few believers ever enter their purpose. For certain, want to learn how you can enter your God-given purpose? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. I protest. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry I protest. I happen to be Jewish. I know the Bible says that the Gentile believer is to provoke the Jewish believer to jealousy. But this is outrageous. You don't have to go so far, Guillermo. I mean, he just, I called him. He said, I said, Guillermo, anything new? He says, yeah, I had a visitation from the Lord. He gave me a new mantle. I'm moving in greater. What's the matter with me? Lord, I would like that new mantle. <laughs> uh, Guillermo, tell us what happened. Every time God gives you a mantle is for an assignment. 
In other words, if you have any assignment that you need to do, God will give you a mantle. And I think the time we're living in, it requires to have a new mantle. You will not be able to overcome darkness the way it is now without a new mantle. Now, this is wonderful, but there's something that I read about in the newspaper. It's not so wonderful. There is an epidemic of young people committing suicide. And I might add, it's not just young people. I'm, I mean, I, it, it, it's, it's over the top. Why is this going on? The reason is lack of purpose. Purpose is the original intention why God created you. And in other words, if you don't know your purpose, Sid, because this people, this generation don't know their purpose, they uh, lack of, they see that the death is more attractive to them. Number two, you see that they said, I feel lonely. Loneliness is not lack of company, it's lack of purpose. And then you see, for example, people without, people without direction. If you don't have direction, it's because you don't have purpose. Purpose is the beginning. Purpose is the beginning of your destiny. You don't know where you're going if you don't know your purpose. God wants to speak to those people that are watching. What is the original intention? God created. God created everyone for a purpose. And there's so many people asking themselves four questions. Who am I? That's talk about identity. That's why you see identity crisis. Who am I? Where am I from? That talks about origin. We came from God. We didn't come from the monkey. We came from God. We didn't come from the big explosion. We came from God. Hello. Yo, we, and, and because number one, who am I? Number two, where am I from? Number three, why is the reason of my existence? Why am I here? That talks about purpose. And lastly, the fourth question is, what is my destiny? What, what am I going now? What are you going with your life? It doesn't matter your age. Abraham was 75, 80, 100 when he started fulfilling his purpose. So it doesn't matter how old Moses you are. Moses was 80. Moses was 80. So that tells you, age had nothing to do with your purpose. There's still time. You, God, purpose cannot be denied to you. Purpose is, is for you, and God created you with a purpose. Now, you know what many people that are watching us right now don't? They think they're rebuking the devil for all the stuff in their life, and they don't know that there is a refining process. This is a mystery to most of you. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Everybody, we were created, we were, we were spirit being before we became human being. We were created in the spirit before the foundation of the world. God finished us there. But now we came to earth, and everything God sends to earth, we must, it must go by through a process. P what is process? Those that are watching at home, process is nothing more than steps and actions and decisions toward compliance with destiny. In other words, you're going to comply with destiny. If you don't submit to your process, you will never comply to, to destiny. This generation wants things now. Instant gratification. Sacrifice is a bad word for them because they never go through a process. They want to be millionaires without work. They want to very. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I know about so, that too. So I will believe that you must go through a process. There's a lot of people watching, asking questions. Said, for example, I, I don't understand why I'm still alive because there's a purpose. There's a great purpose. And as your purpose is as your process, the level of your process is the level of your purpose. In other words, if you have a tough process... Sometimes life doesn't go according so to plan. Ditch the disappointment so with Junior Anniversary Deal up to 50% off. Your purpose is so big you know and got the devil to... If you're under out of this, uh, a refining you process, so used you can be God rejoicing right we now. Turn. Turn. Yes. Yes. Talk about being used by God. Yes. He can I trust want to you. know about and the nurse that operates in miracles. once you come that out of this, in miracles, you will be so used by God. When we return, <laughs> talk about being used by God. God. The devil Thank you.
just uh, uh, bishops or apostles or teachers. This is for every believer. So yeah. in order for you and for me to Hello, uh, this to is Rachel. Well, we customer service. Life, How may I help you I today? Need that I need help. I'm lost. Power. I'm trying to that, find as a my matter of fact, that was the Why don't you use Google Maps in the Old Testament? I'm using it every person that got called into no ministry GMS said you must be anointed. Even the Messiah is not the anointed. You can get Google Maps and read easily. Just download it and navigate. Get a call. My girlfriend is on the line. Be anointed. In hey, Sarah, words, I'm on my way. Not, you will not be able to so fulfill me here. your Sarah, purpose in life why is your unless voice you are so soft anointed. Well, what would you say to the person that is watching us right now and say, well, I am anointed, but I don't have the what money you say to, to fulfill, fulfill my purpose? Well, well, watch us right now and say, well, well, I am anointed, but I don't have the money to fulfill my purpose. In other words, whenever you find your purpose, you needs for a moment. In other, words, <laughs> in other words, abundance in other words, God will come when you enter for in your a moment. purpose. So, so a lot of people abundance in for excess their will come when for their you need. enter in your purpose. And that's why so, so a lot most of us as preachers, we need to teach the people living for their because need. Because when they find and that's their purpose, why they most of us as preachers, we need to teach the so people purpose. So I don't worry about it because when they you, find you their purpose, they will find their provider. So I don't worry about it. If God called you, He will provide. He is the provider. He's the in the strongest level this apostle of God's glory that is I personally have ever in witnessed the strongest on him level and it's got to do with that glory recent that visitation that, that you have ever yes. witnessed on I him believe before. that you have words from God that, that you change. had yes. 
I believe that you life. have words from God. I can feel the power of God flowing. I, and I see our somebody that needs a heart, a heart I condition. There's a God flowing in your heart. I, and I see that somebody that needs a heart, is put in a, a heart, heart condition right now. now. As a matter of fact, the Lord tell me there's a lot to be replaced right now. Is put in a brand new one right now. As a matter of fact, the Lord tell me there's a lot of people right now want to create one. Some of those organs were removed. Kidney and now want to create you and one being in and father there's someone and, and you're with, ready um, to uh, shut down because your body it will be shut down but right now only is working 10 percent god is it's releasing a new kidney in jesus mighty name there's something happening at home i can see a little a child nine years old you will not be able to talk you'll not be able to hear and god is delivering you now and i open open god is opening your mouth and you start talking mother go talk to him tell him to talk to you for the first time. God is healing right now. Father, I release massive creative miracles. There's a divine power flowing upon you now in Jesus' mighty name. Take it, take it, take it. God is creating brand new knees. As this man, I was preaching in a country and he got a prosthetic knee. And as I call him, the Lord created a brand prosthetic knee. God is releasing new knees now in your body. Bones are being created. Flesh are being created. God is spoke to me as I sit down. He said, I will release creative miracles. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I can see glaucoma is being healed. Glaucoma. There's so many miracles happening now, and, and you will see the show. And God is empowering people with divine ability to walk in the supernatural. Father, I activate every person that is watching now to walk in the supernatural, to do miracles, signs, and wonders. I release it now. Take it. Take it. Be activated raise the dead, heal the sick right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, there's a woman by the name um, uh, 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 Merki, Merki, and, and the Lord is healing something in your, as a matter of fact, your womb. Uh, female organs were removed. I feel the presence as I'm, I'm talking to you. And, and God is, you feeling something is filling up in your womb. All your female parts are being filled. Now, I've seen that miracle many times. God created new organs in your body. Father, in Jesus' name, there's a woman uh, said that, that she had uh, one of her breasts had been removed because of cancer. God is creating a brand new breast. Please testify. When you see this, I want you to call those creative miracles. This is the time for creating unusual creative miracles. Right now, in the, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, take it now. Take it now. Amen and amen. God, I'm going to tell you something. I have been with Apostle Maldonado many times. You are at a new level. So when we return, I'm going to ask Apostle Maldonado to pray an apostolic prayer and to prophesy to release destiny yes. and purpose over you. Be right back. We will be right back to Supernatural. Call now and get Guillermo Maldonado's powerful brand new book, Created for Purpose, and his anointed audio teaching, Nine Ways to Know Your Divine Purpose, plus this special Maldonado bonus book, Stress-Free Living. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9685. Through Guillermo Maldonado's brand new powerful book, Created for Purpose, you will clearly understand that God has assigned each of us a proportion of territory where we can exercise our sphere of influence on the earth. Find out what it means to be called by God and how to live in your purpose throughout your life. Understand that a person who is not walking in their purpose will always feel misplaced or even depressed. Learn how to obtain greater joy when living in the center of God's will for your life. Find out how to access God's great supply and prosper so you can walk effectively in God's divine purpose. Through Guillermo Maldonado's anointed audio message, you will 
people learn that every person has a purpose. That means you were created to fulfill your God-given purpose and destiny. Discover nine indicators of how to know your God-given purpose. You will experience victory and see prosperity. Guillermo Maldonado includes anointed prayers that God would open your mind and heart to understand what is God's purpose for your life. That God would open your ears to begin to hear His voice clearly. That God will heal you and wipe out all discouragement and oppression. That God would release healing in your body, mind, and spirit. You will also receive this special bonus book, Stress-Free Living. Guillermo Maldonado leads you in specific steps to stress-free living. You will learn what stress really is. Find out what causes stress and how to overcome it. Discover the path to managing everyday stress. Learn how to be set free from unhealthy stress cycles. Don't miss out on getting Guillermo Maldonado's powerful brand new book, Created for Purpose, and his anointed audio teaching, Nine Ways to Know Your Divine Purpose, plus this special Maldonado bonus book, Stress-Free Living. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9685. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9685 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, you say God's purpose is stronger than any obstacle in your life. Even stronger than someone trying to murder you? Yes, uh, purpose is more powerful than plans. Purpose is more powerful than opposition. Purpose is more powerful than even death. Purpose is more powerful than persecution. One I, time, I, I want you to one, tell Yeah, one time I was ministering in, in one of the countries in, in South America, and we finished the crusades. Uh, uh, this six people with guns follow me and my team to the homes. We were going to have dinner that night. And I remember they came, they put a, a gun in my head. And they put a gun into all the people, not because the thief, because we were thief, it's because we were preaching the gospel. And, 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 and the Lord said to me, in that moment, when you have a gun in your head, what did I think? Yeah, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I said, Sid. I said, Lord, I have not finished my purpose, so death cannot touch me. So you're saying no demon in hell can take Come on. out until you fulfill your destiny. <laughs> That's what he said. You know, you, you know what happened in that moment? So they left. They just took the, the watches, a little money. But we here. <laughs> we keep preaching. <laughs> now, there's something that doctors tell us would rob us. Uh, actually, uh, forgetting get it, forget getting d these dread diseases. The open door to most, maybe 98% of the sicknesses, is something called stress. Stress. Yes, I would say stress has to do with the heart. And, and stress, can I define stress for those Please. people that are watching? Okay, stress is nothing more than when you and I try to do something that only God can do. Hmm. In other words, there's a lot of people stressed out because they want to do something that only God can do. So what you do is just release everything to God. Your anxiety, your impossibilities, just give them to God. Release problems. You are sick in your body. You are being tormented. There's things you cannot do. Just release them to God and rest upon God. And you know what is the best place to rest from stress? The presence of God. Amen. The glory of God. That is the place. The, the Bible calls it the fullness. God, there's a place of fullness. In the presence of God, you will have fullness of rest. You teach and write about keys to knowing our purpose. It's hard to get in that presence of God if you're struggling. God, what am I going to do? <laughs> it, if you want to get in the true peace of God, yes. know your purpose. Give us one or two keys. First of all, to know your purpose, God, you have to know God. You never know your purpose. You never know a thing before you know God. 
God is the one that gave you a purpose. Number one, very quickly, indicators of purpose. What indicates that that is your purpose? Number one, uh, I would say anger, holy anger, divine anger. What angers you, you are called to give solution to. Hmm. Moses, when, when he see one of the Egyptian, one of the Jewish people being beaten up, he got so upset and killed him. So whatever releases your anger, holy anger, divine anger, that you are called to resolve. Number two, your compassion. What you call to, uh, when, when, what releases your compassion? Children, whenever you see sick people. So there's people watching right now, if you allow me to prophesy to certain people. Uh, there's some people right now that you're watching. As a matter of fact, there's someone you call to preach and, and you went away from God. There's someone that you call to a, be a businessman to invest in the kingdom of God and you be you have seen so much that you don't want to know nothing about your purpose so God is calling you there's a lot of people that you abandoned your purpose you'd never submitted to your per to your process and now it's calling you back no matter what their age no matter what the age, because God can, we are living in a time, Sid, that God is accelerating everything. Okay. God can do in one year so, what it took 10 years. So what you think you missed, you don't Come on, God. Yes, yes. You don't know God. Yes. You are not going to miss a beat. Would you release an apostolic prayer yes. over the viewers right now to know and do their destiny? Yes. Father, I want you to stretch your hands all the audience. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just saw it so clearly. I see at 13 years old, you are totally blind and God just healed you. You just felt a heat in your eyes. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release purpose. Father, I ask you to open every person that is watching, open their eyes to see, reveal your purpose to them, what they are, the reason of their existence. And Father, I anoint them for purpose. I release the divine power upon their life to fulfill their destiny. And Father, I ask you now to release that compassion, to release passion, to release the fire of God, even in their bones to come back and to do their destiny. Bring those that wanted to commit suicide. There's a lot of young people watching right now that you've been contemplating suicidal. I, I, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every spear of death come out of their minds. I set you free right now, and I release destiny. I release purpose. I see God. I see people having encounters with God. You just saw something. God is talking to people right now you're saying oh God just spoke to me God just spoke to me there's some people you will have dreams and visions you will have dreams and visions about your purpose in life you were created for a purpose and God is releasing destiny right now father open their eyes to see open their ears to see and I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit God I say thank you Lord thank you yes Lord yes Lord I release the anointing there's one man that is watching me you have such a call from God. You have such a powerful purpose in God and you've been separating from God. And you, you, you by, by your name, as a matter of fact, your name is Mark. Mark, and God is marking you now for destiny and for purpose. I declare God, I rebuke every plan of the enemy to stop your purpose and your destiny. I remove every obstacle. I remove every plan and I release everybody in right now watching being activated in the supernatural for miracle signs and wonders and to fulfill your purpose in life I prophesy life I prophesy destiny I prophesy purpose in Jesus mighty name I tell you what this is the first day of the rest of your destiny come on in light of the coronavirus shutdown, do you feel like your God-given purpose has been thwarted? Are you ready to know how to break free and begin stepping into the next dimension of God's destiny and purpose? Call now and get Guillermo Maldonado's powerful brand new book, Created for Purpose, and his anointed audio teaching, Nine Ways to Know Your Divine Purpose, plus this special Maldonado bonus book, Stress-Free Living. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience, yours for a donation of $29. 
dollars. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9685 through Guillermo Maldonado's brand new powerful book, Created for Purpose. You will clearly understand that God has assigned each of us a proportion of territory where we can exercise our sphere of influence on the earth. Find out what it means to be called by God and how to live in your purpose throughout your life. Understand that a person who is not walking in their purpose will always feel misplaced or even depressed. Learn how to obtain greater joy when living in the center of God's will for your life. Find out how to access God's great supply and prosper so you can walk effectively in God's divine purpose. Through Guillermo Maldonado's anointed audio message, you will learn that every person has a purpose. That means you were created to fulfill your God-given purpose and destiny. Discover nine indicators of how to know your God-given purpose. Understand that when you begin to live by your purpose, you will experience victory and see prosperity. Guillermo Maldonado includes anointed prayers that God would open your mind and heart to understand what is God's purpose for your life, that God would open your ears to begin to hear His voice clearly, that God will heal you and wipe out all discouragement and oppression, that God would release healing in your body, mind, and spirit. You will also receive this special bonus book, Stress-Free Living. Guillermo Maldonado leads you in specific steps to stress-free living. You will learn what stress really is, find out what causes stress and how to overcome it, discover the path to managing everyday stress. Learn how to be set free from unhealthy stress cycles. Everyone is created for a unique thing. Just as everyone has a unique fingerprint, there is a unique purpose for your life. And I'm going to tell you something. This book will supernaturally give you the keys to unlock your purpose. Don't miss out on getting Guillermo Maldonado's powerful brand new book, Created for Purpose, and his anointed audio teaching, Nine Ways to Know Your Divine Purpose, plus this special Maldonado bonus book, Stress-Free Living. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9685. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9685 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. You are watching ISN. The It's Supernatural Network. Have you ever wondered why your prayers aren't being answered or why God uses others in the supernatural but not you? Sid Roth wants to help mentor you to walk in the supernatural of God to make sure that you receive your healing, your miracle, and your breakthrough. The last 40 years, I have interviewed God's generals, the best of the best, moving in every aspect of the supernatural. and. I have put their nuggets, their keys in one book. It's like you getting 40 years of experience from so many different streams of the supernatural. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to draw us one or more of these principles that will give you the breakthrough you need and the breakthrough in your personal ministry. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. It's Supernatural by New York Times bestselling author Sid Roth. Now available everywhere. You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Next, a recent It's Supernatural TV program. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? 
can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. The largest church in the world 830,000 members. It's hard for me to comprehend. 830, South Korea. And the pastor of this church, when it was very small, had never seen a major miracle, and frankly thought all the miracles that were spoken about were just hype. Well, my guest spoke a word to him and catapulted him into walking in major miracles to such a point that my guest was offered to be the co-pastor of the largest church in the world, but he said no. The reason he said no is he had a dream inside of himself, and this dream was not South Korea. Well, today he's fulfilled his dream, but because of his obedience, God has put an anointing and presence of God on this man that he will help you get in touch with your dream and have it become reality. Are you interested? Oh, yeah. I'm here with Pastor Tommy Reed, and this is a real privilege for me because I, kn I knew a lot about him, but I found out a whole lot more. He was mentored by some of the real generals of the world, but one of the greatest generals that mentored him was his own mother. You see, his, his mother was Pentecostal, his father was alcoholic, his father got radically saved instantly went into ministry. You know, wh what is it, Tommy, uh, with me? That's the way it happened to me. Instantly, the moment I knew who Jesus yeah. was, I couldn't keep quiet about him. Others just go so gradual. What is it? I don't know what makes the difference. All I know is I was four years of age, lived with an alcoholic father. He walked into a Wesleyan Methodist church, instantly was delivered from alcoholism, instantly was not only saved, but healed of bleeding ulcers created by his alcoholism. Now, that and, was a life-threatening situation. And, and he was going to die. Hmm. And I was four years of age. I would not have had a father. Walked into that church, heard a Native American evangelist, gave his heart to Christ. His life was totally changed, and our home was totally changed. Eight years of age, you're afflicted. It's almost like the devil knows there's a call of God on someone's life, and the devil tries to stop them before they even get started. Eight years of age, you get polio. polio. Um, tell me what was going on. Well, I, I was laying in my bed. I was unable to walk, and I remember the Lord walked into that room and said to me as clearly as I hear your voice, I'm Jesus, I'm and I'm here. I'm going to heal you today. I will heal you. And there's a lot more to the story, but all I can tell you is that I knew that was true. I looked at my, I looked at as if the devil was there. I pointed my finger at him and said, I'm eight years of age. Devil, you're not going to keep this young man in bed any longer. I'm going to walk. Hmm. Push myself up to the side of the bed. As I pushed myself to the side of the bed, I took my first step, and then I had to let go of the bed and take my second. That would be a miracle. I walked across the room, I looked at the stairs up to my bedroom, and I said, I never, ever have walked one stair at a time. I, 82 years of age, I still don't take them one stair, I still run upstairs. I ran up the stairs, put my clothes down, ran back down, walked out of the kitchen and said to my mother, I want a glass of milk. Mom, and your mother mom, must have sort of <laughs> really well, lost yeah, it. She said, what are you doing? What are you doing walking? <laughs> I said, I told you today Jesus was going to heal me. And as I did that, my mother dropped the milk all over the floor, and she looked at me and said, well, if you're going to drink milk, you're going to lap it up, because that's the last bit I got. She was walking? holding a, 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 some milk in her hand. 
And uh, I said, well, I'll go down to the store. And I ran down to the store and ran back home, and I've been walking ever since. I You know, I believe that his mother might have been the hero in this situation. Tell me what you learned from your mom. Well, I learned from my mother to confess the word. Uh, every day I would say, Mom, I'm going to walk again. And she said, the Bible says, and you say it, I am the Lord that healeth thee. By his stripes I'm healed. Every day I was informed by my mother. She not only urged me, she insisted that I confess the word. And, and I knew that. It was the word that healed me. I learned from my mother, and she was a school teacher. She worked for Cornell University as an educator. She taught me what Jesus did on that cross. And I saw the cross that day when I walked. D did she teach you to hear God's voice? Absolutely. How? My mother would take me out to Emory Park, a, a park uh, overlooking the community where I lived. And uh, she would lay on the, in the winter we would walk through it, in the summer we would lay on our backs. And she would look at the sky and she would say, what do you see? And I would say, well, that's cloud up there, that's a car, that's a boat, that's a ship, and that's an airplane. She would look at me and say, Tommy, if that's a ship, where do you want to go? Where do you dream about going? I said, well, Europe, wherever. And after she would finish, she'd grab my hand as we'd leave. Just and I'll never, never forget a word. She said, Tommy Reed, never, never quit dreams. dreaming because your dreams were because written by God before the foundation of the world. Then about the same time, he starts having visions. Tell me about these visions. Well, I would go to the altar because my mother was teaching me, my dad too, but especially my mother was teaching me to be a man of prayer. And I would go to the altar every Sunday night at this little Assemblies of God church, and I'd kneel at the altar, and the little church around me had handmade seats and old worn-out carpets. And all of a sudden, I would find myself, call it a trance, call it a vision, call it a dream, call it being lost in the Spirit. Every Sunday night, I would get lost in the Spirit. And I would be in another church. It would be a large church, beautiful carpets, everything that I dreamed of being. And I looked at somebody, a young man standing in the pulpit, and I said, that's me. Now, I was a stutter. I could not speak. And yet I was standing as a man in the pulpit, and I saw myself there, and I saw the church I would one day build. I lived with that dream all of my life, wherever I went. I pastored by 26. I was pastoring Bethel Temple, Manila, following Lester Summerall. I worked with Cho in the beginning days. Every place I went, that was not what the church I saw in my dream. I had to go back to Buffalo. That's where the church would be. He's a dreamer. I am a dreamer. God is a dreamer. Absolutely. And God has a dream for you. And Tommy says that God has a dream for everyone. And the whole world would be changed if everyone would follow their God dreams. We'll learn more when we come back. Life is always in motion. Mankind builds, grows, moves, advances. We get so caught up in our chaotic routines that it's easy to forget. In the midst of life's chaos, one thing remains the same. As we face life's obstacles and struggles, we can turn to the promises of the one who never changes. Pastor Tommy Reed, and uh, Tommy, you had the high privilege of uh, being sent to South Korea, and there was a, a young pastor that had potential, and you were supposed to work with him. Yeah. His not, and name was Dr. Paul Youngie Cho, right. that then had the largest church in the world. 
but Paul Yonggi Cho had never seen major miracles. And as a matter of fact, he thought it was all hype, but it changed. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, we went there in the first year of the ministry. In fact, I preached the first revival ever held in that church. And uh, while I was there, we were in, I remember, we we're in this old Chevrolet uh, uh, panel truck, and he was sitting in the back in the seat, and I was sitting in the front. He looked at me and he said, Tommy, I've never seen a real miracle. I was healed myself, but I've never seen God do a miracle. I've seen these healing evangelists come, and they, they purport that's a miracle, but, but I, I've never seen a real miracle. I remember something rose up. You ever rise up inside of you, and yeah. you're speaking for God. I looked at him, and I said, Brother, Brother Cho, you will. You will. While I am here in this country, you will see the miraculous, and you will someday heal the sick. And you know, the, the, the miracle about it was we did see miracles, and he saw it, and more and more I saw him soften. We went to a city called Chunju, Korea. We were in a Presbyterian church, and it was jammed with people and thousands of people on the outside. And uh, the revival was so great, the miracle so great, they wanted to go on another week. So I said to him, will you stay here? You preach the second week, and you pray for the sick. This is the man that said he'd never seen a miracle. He said, I'll do that. I I'm went amazed on... he said he'll do that. <laughs> right. So uh, as, as, he, as I went on to the next city, on the next Tuesday night, I think they had off Monday night, Tuesday night, they came up the hill and said, there's a man dying in the hospital. If you don't come down and pray for him, he will die. So Brother Cho left the service, went down the hill, walked into the hospital, to a man he was going to pray for before he died, found out he was dead. I'm sorry, he's passed on. No, he's not. He pulled the sheet back. This man that a few weeks Jesus before name. said he'd never seen a miracle, pulled the sheet back Get up. and commanded that man to walk. That man got out of bed, began to walk, and then Brother Cho said, come back with me to church. Now, it was a huge steep hill. He climbed all the way up this hill, walked into the church and said, I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Thank you. Okay. He then says to you, I want you, Tommy, to be my co, not assistant, right. my co-pastor. How could you have said no? Well, I had to say no. Why? Because as great as the, the revivals were tremendous, there, there were times in revivals where, where they would take, I remember one night, they took me on their backs and carried me through the city because of the miracles they were seeing. Uh, and yet I knew that that wasn't my city. God had called me as a child at that altar of a little Assemblies of God church where I saw the church I would build. This was not the church. That was his church. It was not mine. I had to go back to where I was called. That was my dream. And, and you know what I think is so amazing is when you went to the city that he was called to, you would think that because of his faithfulness that it would be a breeze, it would be easy. But when you went to Buffalo, New York, how bad was it? It was really bad. I was ready to quit the <laughs> ministry. I said, you know, I could be pastor of the largest church in the world right now. But here I am pastoring 120 people, barely surviving. I don't think they even like me. But, you know, th this wasn't the best place in the world to be. And one day I'm coming up on the New York, New York State Thruway onto a ramp. And all of a sudden I'm crying. From, this prayer is coming out of the inside of me. I'm crying. God, show me the world as you see it. And I kept arguing with my own prayer because that was the Holy Spirit praying. God, I know how you see the world. And I, the Lord said, no, you don't. Keep praying the prayer. As I prayed that prayer, it came out of inside of me. And as I pulled the car up on the throughway, I don't know who drove it. I don't know how long it was. I had a vision. I believe in dreams and visions. I believe in the supernatural. And God took me and I saw the world. And God, show me the world as you see it. It was coming from deep within me. And I saw the nail-scarred hands of Jesus coming toward the world. And here's what I thought. Every Sunday night, I'd preached on hell and I'd preached on judgment. You're trying to get people saved and scare them to death to try to get them saved, you know, like we used to do in our churches. And I saw the hands of Jesus and my first reaction, I know what you're going to do. You're going to bring judgment to this bad world. Instead of the hands of Jesus were gentle. They took and took the world, and he opened it up and said inside, I saw a broken heart, and my life has never been the same. Now I know it was within the weeks. World. The church grew from 120 to 800 in one single week. 
all because of the revelation of God. The revelation of God's love for humanity. God's love for humanity. Well, you know, the Bible says God is love, and maybe, just maybe, uh, we're emphasizing the wrong things. God is love. When we come back, I want to find out how you can find out God's dream for yourself. I want to find out how you can move into God's dream for you. We'll be right back. Tommy wants to help you find your God-given dream and teach you why it's never too late to pursue it and live it. Call now and get Tommy Reed's box set, Your God Dream, which includes his powerful book, How to Live Out of Your Dream, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching series, Your God Dream, Discovering Your Greatest Potential, plus his award-winning DVD docudrama, The World Within You and Around You, yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9291. After each chapter of the book, you have a place to write your notes, questions to guide you through the principles he's teaching, and action steps to begin your journey to live out God's dream for your life. Through this two-part audio CD teaching series, you will understand how to overcome the things hindering you from achieving the God dream inside you. Begin to walk in the supernatural power of God as a normal part of your life. Tommy prays a powerful prayer of impartation over you so you can fulfill your calling and God-given purpose. Plus, you you will receive his award-winning DVD docudrama, The World Within You and Around You, based on the supernatural faith healing story of Pastor Tommy Reed. You will identify with eight-year-old Tommy Reed as he is supernaturally healed of polio and shows you how living out your dream will cause you to walk through the open door of God's dream, fulfilling his destiny and purpose for you on earth. Don't miss out on getting Tommy Reed's box set, Your God Dream, which includes his powerful book, How to Live Out of Your Dream, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching series, Your God Dream, Discovering Your Greatest Potential, plus his award-winning DVD docudrama, The World Within You and Around You, yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9291. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9291 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Can everyone have a dream? Or is it just special people like Tommy Reed? Absolutely. Not only can everyone, everyone does have a dream. Sometime when you were a child, seven or eight years of age, God began to speak into your spirit what the purpose of your life was. If he wrote it before the foundation of the world, that means that he's going to give it to you. They had some kind of a dream, but mother said, yeah, it's just your imagination. Everybody said, that, that, that's crazy. You could never be president. You could never preach the gospel. You could never do that. You're, you're not smart enough to do that. And the dream was lost. And the problems with our world today, Sid, is because somebody didn't believe their dream. The world is unevangelized because God put in the heart of enough people enough power to evangelize the world, but we've never believed it. My passion, I have a passion today in these years of my life. I've got to get out and teach this nation that there's something that God gave them to do. There's a dream that God put in their heart. And if I could get people to believe that, if I could get people to know that inside of the depths of their spirit, look at Henry Ford. Henry Ford was an amazing man. And, and uh, he had this dream to put America on wheels, but there were no gas stations. <laughs> there were no roads. He changed the world in spite of the fact the whole world out there was alien to his dream. That's what's inside of us. There's evangelists inside of us, and there's businessmen, and there's millionaires, there's billionaires. There, there are people out there that God has intended to change the world if they'll only believe it. I have a passion to teach that to America. How about someone that says, I, I don't know my dream. How can I find it? Well, I think, first of all, there's several things. It's, it's hard to say that in the few minutes Why we've got. Cathedral? But one, go back. Remember what, what, what happened to you. Remember what you thought about. I, my best friend growing up was Paul Crouch, who built TBN. He had a movie camera, 
I wish I would have brought it on the set. Little movie camera. He would dream of making films. He would dream of radio. We, we fooled with... I can't tell you what it was like to live with a 10-year-old boy that had a dream. That kind of thing is inside of every single one of us. The last thing Paul Krauss did for me was look at a camera and say, Tommy, let you and I keep dreaming because dreams will change the world. Briefly, tell me your teaching on the cathedral and the altar. Yeah, well, Abraham is my example of the dreamer because God told him he was going to have a family and it was going to be a great family. It would be a nation and it would be a nation who would bless the world. And God made a covenant. He had God the Father and God the Son walking between the sacrifices, saying, I'm going to swear by myself that this land is yours. I'm going to swear by myself that you, I will give you a family. This is my covenant, and I'm swearing by myself to make that covenant. Well, what did he take it? He took it out in the open air into what I call the cathedral of God. He's walking by the water. He puts his fingers through the sand. Those are my children. He looks at the stars and he said, those are my children. I can't, I'm enough an astronomer to know I can't count them. Those are my children. You take your dream, first of all, to the cathedral of God, the open air. Then you take it. Abraham built an altar because in the presence of God, there is the wonder of the dream. There's the wonder of what God wants to do with you in his presence. Spend time under the open heavens dreaming and spend time in the presence of God, letting God reveal his dream for you. Would you pray right now Absolutely. that we find our dreams, that everyone that is viewing this will find their dream? Yes. Uh, can I just look in that camera right now and tell you that you have a dream? You may not know what it is. Maybe somebody has thwarted it. Maybe somebody has tried to destroy it. You may be 80 years of age, but there's a dream in your heart that's never been fulfilled. I'm talking to everybody, every single person on the other side of that camera. I want to pray for you that you'll discover it and you live it. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may the peace of God, the peace that passeth all understanding, come into that person's heart and take them back and show them what you plan for their life. It's never too late. I know that, Lord. Give them the fulfillment of their dream. God is a dreamer. And before the foundation of this earth, he knew you and called you and have a dream, has a dream for your life. Now, this is what you have to do. He's done it all. All you have to do is accept it. He died for your sins. He died out of his personal love for you. He took every one of your sins, every one of your pains, every one of your heartaches and upon himself. And by his blood, he says, I remember your sins no more. If you will ask him to forgive you and tell him you're sorry for the mistakes, believe that his blood covered your sins, and then ask him to come inside of you and be Lord of your life because God has a dream. And you, you, he's telling me people are being healed as I'm speaking, backs, pains are disappearing. You are his dream. You are special. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. And never forget, God is for you, so nothing can be against you. Never. As a young boy, Tommy Reed was supernaturally healed of polio and severe stuttering. As a young man, he was given the opportunity to pastor what is known today as the largest church in the world. But instead, he decided to pursue the dream that God had written on his heart before the foundation of the world. Tommy wants to help you find your God-given dream. We will be back with Tommy Reed in just one moment. God has given me a prophetic word for the whole world that inside of you, is a dream, a dream that's greater than you can imagine because there's always something greater inside of us than what's around us. The Bible tells us that God wrote our names or wrote our destiny in our hearts before the foundation of the world. You might change a city or change a nation, 
or change the world. Tommy wants to help you find your God-given dream and teach you why it's never too late to pursue it and live it. Call now and get Tommy Reed's box set, Your God Dream, which includes his powerful book, How to Live Out of Your Dream, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching series, Your God Dream, Discovering Your Greatest Potential, plus his award-winning DVD docudrama, The World Within You and Around You, yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9291. What God wrote about you is inside of you, and it was written before the foundation of the world. So in this book is this workbook where we go through all the truths of what's inside of you, and then we ask and answer the questions, and you'll find your own dream. Through this two-part audio CD teaching series, you will understand how to overcome the things hindering you from achieving the God dream inside you. Learn how to take your God dream to the altar and make it become reality. Begin to walk in the supernatural power of God as a normal part of your life. Tommy prays a powerful prayer of impartation over you so you can fulfill your calling and God-given purpose. Plus Plus, you will receive his award-winning DVD docudrama, The World Within You and Around You, based on the supernatural faith healing story of Pastor Tommy Reed. You will identify with eight-year-old Tommy Reed as he is supernaturally healed of polio and shows you how living out your dream will cause you to walk through the open door of God's dream, fulfilling his destiny and purpose for you on earth. You know, I keep thinking, if I had only had something like that when I was a teenager, if I had only had that supernatural impartation, which is in the DVD and is in the book, what a difference it would have made. That's why God told Tommy he had to write the book and do the DVD. That impartation is waiting to embrace you. The next move is yours. Don't miss out on getting Tommy Reed's box set, Your God Dream, which includes his powerful book, How to Live Out of Your Dream, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching series, Your God Dream, Discovering Your Greatest Potential, plus his award-winning DVD docudrama, The World Within You and Around You, yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9291. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9291 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. Watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. You're watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Up next, a special TV program from one of our ministry partners.
I hate it. I just want to be free. I just want to be free. And then something happens to that person. A touch or a breeze or in a form of a wind. I know it is Jesus. Maybe you are sitting here today and you are saying, I need that transformation because I don't want to be stuck in this place anymore. Now this is the biggest harvest time. This is the revival time for God to come and change everything. Miraculous restoration. Something was stolen from you. Something taken from you. And you need a miraculous restoration today. Maybe it is your innocence. Maybe it is your health. Maybe a loved one. I don't know what it is today, but maybe even your reputation. How people talk about you and look at you. Something unrightfully taken from you and you suffer the loss. Restoration means going back to its original condition, even better. That is restoration. I know in Turkey, we have so many, so many old buildings. And you, I mean, Istanbul is called an open air museum. Entire city is like a museum. You just walk on the street and you start seeing a door and there's a sign on the door. This door is from second century. You go to Ephesus and you see another type of history, open museum. You walk in the city and you see the ruins and you see the rocks and the stones and all the artwork. Then there are these houses, gorgeous, gorgeous houses in Istanbul. They are priceless, priceless. But most of the time there's a big sign, restoration. And then after months or, or a year, you see that house in the best shape of its life. You see that house is so much more better looking than the one in the past. But every house like that has to be considered whether they are going to be knocked down and completely demolished or they are going to be restored. Better than before. Maybe it's never going to be the same. Because when Job lost his children, God gave him same number of children. But he still suffered the loss. None of the new children could take the place of his old children. I bet he still grieved when he thought about the children that he buried, his memories, even he smell maybe with his wife, their clothes. He remembered their names and what they liked, how they have had fun and talk and interact with each other. Miraculous restoration. Restoration is not always the way that you design and you hope for and you want it. But if you embrace it, it is better than the one before that God wants to bring into your lives today. Into your lives with this message. Maybe your hopes are stolen. You lost hope in life. So many disappointments and frustrations led you to a place that you don't hope anymore. You don't expect anymore. Because if you expect, you are afraid that you will be disappointed. You are hurt in a relationship. And God wants to bring someone so wonderful into your life. And you make that man to pay the price. Just because someone hurt you. Someone disappointed you. 
Somebody, maybe a father, walk away from your life. And you think that everyone is going to walk away. And you reject them first. You stay away from them first. Because this is your safe zone. And you don't allow God to restore you. You don't allow God to give you restoration. I lost my childhood in many ways. I had to grow up so fast. My mother was in depression. She was on drugs. My father was a womanizer. Many women in his life, including my mom's best friends, she couldn't bring a best friend home. She couldn't bring a friend home. I couldn't bring a friend home because of my dad. I couldn't bring a friend home when I was a teenager. If I brought, he would make perverse comments and he would say things that I can't even repeat. I lost my childhood innocence because of a family relative. He exposed me to the things that I shouldn't, as a little girl, four or five years old girl, should be exposed. Nothing could bring back that childhood if you look at it from the natural eyes. Nothing. It's gone. I never can be five years old again. I never can be 18 again. When I was 19, I was kicked on the floors by my abusive Muslim husband. Nobody can give me my 19 back. I am in my 40s. But God, he can give me and he did something far greater than what I had lost. He gave me something much more. That is God's miraculous restoration. Far greater if you embrace it. But many people don't see it and they want to stay in their pity parties and they want to say, why me? Why me? While the life is passing through their eyes and they are missing the train. Many people say, stay in the past and say, oh, what happened to me? What happened to me? What happened to me? While God is bringing opportunities after opportunities, Miracles after miracles, trying to get their attention to say, here I am, I want to restore you. But you are not allowing me. And that happened with me. Then I became a single mother. And I remember I was feeling even sorry for my little girl. While God was trying to restore our lives. I remember one day she felt so bad, they called me from her preschool and they said, you need to come immediately. She fell on the floor and she hit her chin to the floor and then her tongue got pierced between her two teeth. And there was a huge hole and we didn't know what to do. I took her to the emergency room. They said, they cannot do anything, it will heal itself and she was just bleeding but before I took her to the emergency room I was picking her up and I was crying with her and I was saying my poor baby my poor baby and I believe it was from the Lord that one of the teachers came up to me and she pulled me aside and she said mother listen to me stop saying my poor baby she said she almost slapped me on the face with her words. She said, you're only teaching your daughter how to feel sorry for herself. I see you here every time she has an accident or little something, you keep telling her, my poor baby, you are teaching her to feel sorry for herself. And rest of her life, she is going to feel that way because of your words. Hug her, love her, tell her everything is going to be okay. Embrace her and just put her in your arms. But stop pitying her and stop pitying yourself. And it was like a big electric, you know, big lightning in my head at that very moment. 
It was a profound word from this precious school teacher that was so angry at me and at my words. But I was awakened suddenly. And then with the soberness, I look at my life and God was truly trying to restore our lives and heal our wounds. And there was only one person in the way was me. There was only one hindrance and barrier for my miraculous restoration was me. And when I saw that and I removed myself from my pride and anger and bitterness and all the resentment and all the ugly stuff that I've been through in my past, God was ready. God was just ready almost to a point that he could not wait to restore me. He couldn't. I mean, just like a perfect father. You see your kid is hurting. You see your kid is losing something. And you just want to make it right. He was waiting. He was anxious for my restoration. While I was rejecting it. Maybe this is you today. <laughs> Naomi and Ruth were restored. Naomi said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. I am a bitter woman. I lost two sons and a husband. I lost everything. I'm nothing. She had a pity party. She was pitying herself. She was feeling so sorry for herself. She wanted everybody to cry, everybody to say, oh, poor you. While God was so anxious to restore, even better than before to her. And he did. He did. He gave her a daughter-in-law that was better than ten sons. And that daughter-in-law led her to freedom, to redemption. And she had a grandchild in her arms that she could raise. God restored her, but God restored her in his way. His two sons and her husband could never be back. Like David said, I cannot bring back the dead, but I can go to him when his baby son died. I cannot bring him back, but I will go to him one day. But here is the key point that she could say, no, 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 I am not going to receive this grandchild. This is not my grandchild, first of all. This is from my daughter-in-law, and she's married to Boaz, and they have their own children. I am not part of it. It's not my, my blood, really. I mean, you may think that from the far relatives, yes, but it is, it is not. It's not my son. It's not my husband. She could reject that. Maybe you are rejecting what God is giving you today. Do you know how many families that I know that they adopted children and they are suffering? Because those adopted children never can accept them as their own parents. God is giving them a restoration. God is giving them an amazing fortune. But those kids somewhere in their hearts, even they call them mom and dad, suffer loss. And some part of their hearts reject that love. You know why? Because their eyes are fixed in the wrong place. And they only see the loss, not the restoration. It happened to me. Also restoration, another miraculous restoration to Naaman. Second Kings chapter 5, 1 through 16. He was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was the commander. He was the general. He was the top. He was a hero, brave man. He had everything. He had money. He had power. He was courageous. But 
He had a skin disease. He had leprosy. And when you have a skin disease, everybody knows. So it was not something hidden. Imagine that man being the commander of the army, but something so visible in his appearance every day, going in front of the man that under him. Day after day after day, he's looking at a mirror and living with that. Imagine he has everything but one thing that he looks, he thinks ridiculous on the outside. And no one can help him. And later on we know that he went to this prophet, man of God. And he got even upset at the prophet because prophet told him, go, go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River. You see, he was not expecting restoration that way. He was expecting restoration his way. He said, it is not the rivers in my country is better than the river of Jordan. I could not go and dip myself. Pride comes. He's needy, but he has pride. Don't think that needy is humble. There are needy people, insecure people, so prideful. You wouldn't believe how prideful they are. It is always about them. And here Naaman has a leprosy on the inside that you don't see more than on the outside. He has that leprosy in his mind that he knows how to figure out things. He knows how to be in control. So he doesn't want to go under someone else's control. He doesn't want to submit because he's a leader. He knows how to give orders, but he doesn't know how to take an order. He doesn't know how to submit. But he could not be restored until he had to submit. There's a miraculous power in submission. There's a miraculous power in obedience. I always say that. But if you have pride in your heart, you can't. You cannot submit anyone. You cannot take any criticism. You cannot. You're untouchable. When you're untouchable, you're incurable. When nobody can touch you, nobody can say a word to you, nobody can do anything to you, you're incurable. And you will die as an old maid. You will die as an old man without a marriage, without a boyfriend, without a husband, without anyone in your life because you're untouchable. Nobody can talk to you, nobody can say anything to you, even for your own good. You cannot be restored. And don't blame God because it's you. It's you who is the hindrance of your restoration. I know many people like that. And you do too. Maybe you are one of them. That you will never receive the blessings of God in your life until you remove yourself from the equation and you say, I embrace it. I embrace it. This is for my good. I'm going to learn and grow from it. And finally, Naaman was rebuked by someone under him. And he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River. And I give credit, a lot of credit to the prophet. He knows that the commander of the army is coming at his, at his door. He's not even bothered to go out. It is so much like God. God has no respect of a person. He doesn't show any favoritism. Your title, your career, your diploma, your this, your that means nothing to God unless your personality lines up with his personality and his love and his care, his character. And prophet doesn't even go out to acknowledge him. Oh, wow, you are the commander. Oh, everybody worship. Everybody bow down to him. No, go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Sometimes people come to me and they say, I want to be delivered. Please deliver me. I say, I cannot deliver anybody from their demons. You can deliver yourself with Jesus. I can only be the facilitator. They don't like it. They want me to do the magic. But you need to go, go to God. 
so the prophet wouldn't be the one to take the credit, but God. And then Naaman first time follows the orders. First time in his life he is submitting to someone else's authority. And you know what happens after seven times? Not one time, not two times, not three times, not four times, not five times. He could have said, you know what, I'm done with this. Nothing is happening. Seven times he had to dip himself in the Jordan River. You know what it says at the end? He was restored. His skin was restored and it was as of a baby's skin. It was so beautiful, so perfect. What do you think? Was it humbling? <laughs> I don't know if he thought of anything other than rejoicing that the years of misery was over. It was over. Miraculous restoration. Where is your leprosy? Where is your cancer? What is your loss? I want to tell you one thing about restoration. That somebody comes and cuts your, ar cuts your arm. You suffer the loss of losing that arm. You have to forgive that person, but still you don't have an arm. You lost the arm. You need an arm. And nobody maybe gives that arm to you back. You lost it. Maybe you don't have a father and someone comes and puts his arms around you with pure motives as a father. But that man has flaws too. And you still dwell in the past while God is bringing you restoration. What God is doing in your life is a miracle and you are missing it. And you think that you are gaining that with your own strength, with your own power, with your own talent. And it means nothing to you. It gives you no joy because you are trying to do it your own. Nobody can replace that father. Nobody can replace that arm. But God can miraculously restore you something greater and far greater that you never expected or dreamed of. He can give you the better. Just like he did with Naaman, and he did it with Naomi. <laughs> Isaiah 61, 4 through 7. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. Restore the places long devastated. Maybe you are devastated today. I know a mother a few years ago lost two children during a car accident. And last year she gave birth to twins, boy and a girl. Restoration. Those, that twi those, those twins are never going to take the place of her children. But she gave her testimony and glorified God and called it miraculous restoration. So it is a choice. It's a choice to change your perspective and line up your perspective with God's perspective to say, I received that. I have lost that. I suffered the loss. I am grieving over this loss. And it's never going to return back to me. But that's okay. God is giving me this. I am never going to be five years old again or 18 years old or 13 years old. But I, I want to tell you, God gave me my childhood after 40. I can have fun and enjoy life like a little child. And it is real to me. I never can go back. But I can enjoy my daily life with the joy of the Lord that he has given me. It is a choice. <laughs> Today, if you need a miraculous restoration, would you first please 
if you have to, and if you feel like God is speaking to your heart, repent from rejecting God's healing and restoration. Would you please say, I'm sorry, I missed this, and this was in front of my eyes all this time, and I've been rejecting your restoration, God, and I am ready to receive it. I will receive it right now. I'm sorry for my disbelief. I'm, I'm sorry for my double-mindedness. I'm sorry that I try to make everybody else around me pay the price for my loss. Like everybody owe me something because I suffer loss. I'm sorry for my attitude, Lord. I don't deserve anything, but I do believe you are anxious to give me a miraculous restoration. Wife or a husband or a child or money or house or childhood, hope, dreams, years, lifetime, whatever you have lost, even health, maybe your hair due to cancer. Maybe you lost a breath. God can do anything. Anything. He can restore you today, right now, if you are willing to receive it and say, I embrace it. This is my restoration. I embrace it. I'm not going to find fault in it. I'm not going to criticize it. I'm not going to compare it. I am going to receive it. Our God is in restoration business. And he wants to restore you with something far greater than you have. This program is made possible by friends and partners of Ishik Abla Ministries. If you'd like to support our ministry, please go to our website at www.ishikabla.com. There you can make a secure tax-deductible donation. Our vision is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with a message of salvation, freedom, and healing for the transformation of the Muslim world and bring revival to the body of Christ. We thank you for your support. are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Second by second, we go about trying to keep up with the quick pace of our lives, going to places, working, eating, communicating, selling, buying, rushing. It's as if we are slaves to time. Seconds become minutes. Minutes become hours. Hours become days. Have you ever asked yourself, what am I really accomplishing? Is this what I've been created for? If you could only spend just one minute with God, your life would never be the same. From It's Supernatural Press. You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Next, a special ministry program taped in our It's Supernatural Media and Mentoring Studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. God Talk, a time for believers in Messiah to pray in the language of heaven. 
any believer in Messiah is given this miraculous gift, which is the doorway to all other gifts of the Holy Spirit. As a new believer in Jesus, I spoke in the language of heaven, tongues, and knew it was important, but never knew how important it was. Through investigation, I have found the greatest healing giants in history followed Paul's admonition. He urged believers to pray without ceasing. The only possible way to do this is to pray in the language of heaven all the time. Paul said he prayed in the language of heaven more than you all. This was his secret for receiving so much revelation. The only way to completely fulfill your destiny is to speak in this supernatural language. The only way you can completely stop the devil in his schemes to destroy you and your family and nation is to pray in tongues. When you pray this amazing language, you pray perfect prayers with perfect faith. Even the devil can't come against these prayers. Why? Because he can't understand them. This is why we birthed a half-hour TV show twice a day devoted solely to praying in tongues. It will make praying in tongues easier to pray with other believers in this atmosphere of heaven. It will make you more consistent in praying in tongues. My goal is to get one million Christians praying in tongues for at least 30 minutes per day with the desire you will form the habit of speaking God talk without ceasing. If you are a believer and do not pray in the language of heaven, go to the website on the screen and Sid will teach you how to release your amazing gift. If you have this gift, let's start praying now. Welcome to God Talk. We are so excited that you're with us. It's just a joy that you are joining with us in prayer. We have a number of prayer warriors here ready to go. And we're going to do something a little special. We've never done this before at God Talk. We're going to blow the shofar because we're going to pray for families today. And we need a breakthrough in families. We need fathers and mothers and sisters. We need a breakthrough in families. Amen. So we're going to start with blowing the shofar. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to invite you to begin right now, here and at home, to begin to pray and intercede for families right now. Robo Let's intercede for our families. Intercede for our families. Families all across the world. Revesh, Yondor Makaya. Robo Sotorianda. We need God as the head of our families again. We need God the Father as the head of our families. Robo. Pray that Jesus becomes the center of our families once again. Robo, Kiando Robo, Shandaraba.
Let's believe for the glory of God to fill every home. That the glory of the Lord would begin to fill homes. That the presence of God would permeate through every room and every house. In your house that's listening, we're going to pray for the glory to come into your home, into your room, even now. restoration of marriages the restoration of marriages right now if your marriage looks hopeless at home I want you to pray for your husband pray for your wife pray for your spouse even now restoration of marriages That's right, that's right. Ramba Breakthrough in marriages. Breakthroughs in marriages all over the world. All over the world, breakthroughs in marriages. Thank you. 
want to pray for your lost loved ones to come home. The, your, your loved ones that are in drugs, alcohol, perversion, whatever it may be, just away from God, agnostic. We're going to pray for our loved ones right now, that they would come home, that would, they would be born again, that they would come out of their sin and into the glorious, glorious news of Jesus. Lord, save uncles and aunts and grandparents, sons and daughters, Lord. Bring them home. Bring them home, Lord. Save husbands and wives, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see it, Lord. Bring in to the kingdom our lost loved ones, God. Call your loved ones by name. Call your loved ones by name and tell them to come home and intercede for them. of God. Just see them coming home. See them walking through your front door. Just say, I'm coming home. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. for the blessing of God to be poured out over families. A blended family, single parents, whatever it is, just pray for the blessing of God to come on every family listening. We intercede for a breakthrough in finances and in health, in emotions, every area we're contending for breakthrough in families.
whatever is going on in your home right now, we're believing it's going to shift. It's going to shift right now. We declare it's shifting in Jesus' name. We're praying with you. We're praying for you. We're praying together. Breakthrough is coming to your family. right now together let's do this right now together let's begin to sing in the spirit and believe for peace in the home that's right
That's right, the peace of God is going into your home. The peace of God. Keep singing in the spirit. Sing in the spirit now. Lift up your voice. We're declaring peace in the spirit in your home. Let's pray for God's presence now. God's presence to desaturate every area of every home listening right now. Oh, Lord, release your presence in the home. Release your presence. Pray in the spirit with that. Lord, just release your presence. For miracles and families right now, yes, healings yes, and yes, miracles yes, and signs yes, and wonders. Such a sweet spirit here in the studio. We're believing for that presence to touch your life, to touch your home. Everybody that's watching. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. I know that you can feel that at home. We're going to keep praying here in the studio. There's such a peace of God here. We, we just believe that that same presence is going right through the camera, right into your own home. And I want to thank you for listening to God Talk. I want you to join us again for another time together where we can pray in the Spirit. We'll see you next time. Warning, the most significant supernatural tool speaking in tongues has been hijacked from the church. Learn how this gift of the Spirit can forever change your life. Call now and receive Sid Roth's anointed PTT, personal trainer for tongues, which includes three audio CDs and one DVD teaching. For a donation of $30, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1580. On these three audio CDs, hear powerful teaching and testimonies from Joan Hunter, Corey Russell, Marilyn Hickey, Hank Kuhneman, and so many others. Learn how speaking in tongues has allowed them to fulfill their God-given destiny. On this special DVD, Sid is your personal trainer. He has a special anointing to help you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many began speaking in multiple supernatural languages. Play this for your friends and get them all praying in tongues. By speaking in tongues, you will prophesy your future. Pray perfect prayers with 
perfect faith. Obtain supernatural power to overcome every problem you're facing. Build up your spirit. Watch other supernatural gifts come to the surface. Witness an increase in the miraculous. Don't miss out on getting Sid Roth's anointed PTT, personal trainer for tongues, which includes three audio CDs and one DVD teaching for a donation of $30. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1580. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 1580 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. This is Sid Roth reminding you to pray without ceasing in supernatural languages. We want to send you life-critical worldwide prayer requests. If one million Christians pray in tongues for these requests, nothing will be able to stop the advancing of God's kingdom. Our email address is on the screen. Watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Next, an It's Supernatural TV program from our archive library. When this man speaks, People are instantly healed. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm with a good friend of mine, Dr. Norman Robertson. When this man speaks, miracles occur. Norman, tell me of one miracle that comes to mind. We were just in Maine a few weeks ago. A man from Boston, he now lives in, in Maine, in Bangor, Maine, in a wheelchair for 10 years. He was hit by a dumpster, one of those trucks, a big truck, 10 years ago, left totally paralyzed in a wheelchair for the past 10 years. I prayed for him on the Monday night. The power of God touched him. He came out of the wheelchair, and he's been out ever since. He pushed the wheelchair right out of the church, came back the next night, testified, without the wheelchair, totally healed because of God's power. Now, I, I've, I've seen you speak, and you hear words from God and speak them out. Uh, how does it sound when you hear these words? As a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, and the Holy Spirit's a real person. He has a real voice, and He can speak to us. And so the voice of God speaks to me and directs me who to pray for, what to pray for. Sometimes it's a still, small voice. Other times I call it the amplified voice. It comes with more authority. But the Holy Spirit, the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit is He wants to heal people. I was sharing with you before the program that back in 1995, I was preaching in Tampa, Florida. 
And one morning before the service, as I was praying in my hotel room, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, like a muddy wind, blew in the hotel room. I just, I had to hold on to a piece of furniture. Otherwise, I mean, I mean, fell over the, under the power of God. And the Spirit of God said to me, Were you praying? What, what was going on? That this I was praying. I was, in, I was actually worshiping the Lord. And, just and, and you're telling me that there was a force that almost knocked you over? Sometimes it happens to me, yes. Okay, go ahead. God's real and His presence is so real. His power is so real. And so the Holy Spirit said to me, I want to heal people. I want people free of disease, free of sickness, and free of physical maladies because I love them. And then He said this, healing is what I do. You know, motor mechanics, they work on cars. School teachers, they teach at school. But the Holy Spirit is in the business of healing sick bodies. That's what he does. I'd like to know when this started, how this started with you. I mean, you, you, the first time you prayed for someone, tell me. Well, we have to go all the way back 25 years ago. You know, 1999 right now, but 1974, I got born again, saved, became a Christian in uh, the city of Durban in South Africa. And it was a powerful conversion, and the Lord just made himself so real to me well, and, you were telling me that the man told what happened to him, and that just thrust you into this, this realm. What happened to that man? Well, I, what happened, I was, I was a religious person. I go to church four times a year, Christmas, Easter, weddings and funerals. Um, not a believer, not a Christian, but I was playing squash one day at the local YMCA, and this young man came up and spoke to me. I recognized who he was. He was a rock star a former rock mm -hmm. star in South Africa, big name. And he began to talk to me about Jesus. And the more he talked to me about Jesus, there was a supernatural presence, an anointing behind his words. And when he gave me his testimony, told me how the Lord had appeared to him in his hotel room supernaturally. He was about to commit suicide. And Jesus' supernatural appearance changed his whole life. Did you believe that Jesus um, came to this guy who was just a rock star? Well, I had some questions, but what I could not question was the, was the power and the conviction and mm -hmm. the authority behind his words. And I'll be honest with you, because of that, that uh, story, I, I couldn't sleep for three days and nights. I, mm -hmm. I wrestled just, it, this, the presence of God was upon me. And later the following week, I went with him to a full gospel crusade and gave my life to Jesus. And from that time, I became a believer, I became a Christian, and my whole life changed. The first time you prayed for someone, tell me about that. It was three months later, and I was actually at a barbecue, and uh, the person I prayed for was a dog. <laughs> a dog? Yeah. Here's what happened. We were having, we were having a barbecue at a Christian uh, some fellowship, and I noticed at the barbecue that this, this family, they had a pet, a bulldog and his left eye kept blinking the whole night. And finally I said to the lady, I said, lady, what's wrong with your dog? She said, oh, the dog was hit by a car four weeks ago and was left with this nervous twitch in the left eye and is totally blind. And I said, lady, we're gonna pray for your dog right now. And she was a, she'd been a Christian for many years, many, many years, went to a full gospel church, was an elder's wife. And she almost fell over when I said, I wanna pray for your dog. And she said, pray for the dog? I said, yes. I said, I was reading in the Bible that Jesus said, lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I said, your dog looks sick to me. See, when Jesus said, lay hands upon the sick, that's talking about sick Christians, sick non-believers, anybody or anything that's sick. Jesus said, we have the authority in his name to pray and lay hands upon them. So you didn't hear a word to do it. You just saw a sick dog and wanted to help the dog. Began to act on faith. Believe the New yeah. Testament. Believe the Word of God. And so I laid my hands upon my wife and I. We laid hands upon this dog. I mean, the blinking, winking, blind-eyed bulldog. <laughs> I can picture the blinking <laughs> boy. <laughs> and, he, and here's what happened. The following Sunday morning in church, this lady ran up to me, ecstatic. We had prayed for the dog on the Monday night previously, mm -hmm. and she said the dog was no longer, no longer had the twitch, no longer blinking anymore. She took it back to the animal doctor on the Saturday morning, and the doctor was, the vet was absolutely amazed. He said the dog has it got complete sight restored to that blind eye. What did you think about that? I realized immediately that God was in the business of healing the sick. Just like he did in Bible days, he wants to heal the sick today. God is such a good God. He, you know, he loves mankind. And one of the ways, that, one of the ways, one of the many ways mm -hmm. that God reveals his great love and great power is through healing the sick. Sometime during this telecast, I really believe 
that at some time during this telecast... Well, there's someone right now. Right now? Right now. What, what's going on? Carpal tunnel condition in their left wrist. There's several viewers. Mm -hmm. they, have a, they have pain in their wrists, especially the left wrist, but I'm going to play for both wrists. If you're watching right now, if you've ever had any kind of pain or you have pain right now in your left wrist, carpal tunnel in both wrists, right now in the name of Jesus, God's power is right there going through the TV set to heal and remove the pain and the affliction from your wrist. You're being healed right now. If you just begin to move that wrist, the left one, the right one, you'll see that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, is healing you right there in Jesus' name. Well, that was a practical demonstration of what I said God was going to do. I said that by faith. And the moment it came out of my mouth, a word from God came out of Norman's mouth. Now, I also heard a word, and I don't even have a tinge of reservation that you are healed from car carpal's tunnel, and you are healed with a neck condition. If you will, I mean, I, uh, uh, Norman, I heard that as clearly. Uh, if you'll move your head just like this, bend it over if you had a pain. Don't do it if you didn't have a pain, you know what I mean? If you had a, and, and, and the headache has just gone, and backs are being, oh, this is going to be an explosive show. Backs are being healed right now in Jesus' name. Don't you dare go away. There is a demonstration of the reality of the living God. Be right back after this. We'll return with Sid Roth and It's Supernatural right after this. For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself. To create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Adin novi chalyak. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I'm speaking to Dr. Norman Robertson, and we just had a demonstration of the supernatural. Uh, one of these days, we're gonna have a whole bank of telephone operators, and you'll be able to call in because I know that large numbers of people were instantly healed. Dr. Robertson, tell me, just because I'm curious, what you consider the most outstanding miracle that has occurred. Uh, as you've been teaching or speaking. We've seen so many miracles, some awesome displays of the power of God. We've had people healed of AIDS. Medi AIDS? Medically There's documented. No, there, there, there is no cure for AIDS. That's right, but Jesus has got the you cure You can for AIDS. stall it, but you have had medically verified of AIDS. One time in Greensboro, North Carolina, a black lady, this was three years ago, 1996. But the most awesome miracle for me personally mm -hmm. was a crusade we, were, we had in San Jose, Costa Rica. It was a Friday night service. There was about 7,000 people in the meeting. We had preached till about 11 o'clock at night, saw the power of God heal all kinds of conditions. As I was leaving the building, a man tapped me in the shoulder, weeping. He had a little girl with him with a beautiful pink dress on. It was her sixth birthday. That particular day was her sixth birthday. She was born deaf and dumb. Hmm. So since birth, never heard, never spoke. And the, her father said, would I please pray a special prayer for her? It was her birthday. And I felt the compassion of God, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit rise up out of me. And I placed my fingers in her, in her deaf ears, prayed in Jesus' name. I placed my finger in her mouth, prayed in Jesus' name, and instantly the power of the Holy Spirit came upon her and her... Ears opened up, you could see the reaction, and she began to speak words, not intelligible words. The next day, she came back to the meeting, her speech began to improve. On the Sunday morning, her father and her were able to testify together and talk about what Jesus had done. A powerful, awesome miracle. 
deaf and dumb, six years of age, a special prayer on her birthday, God healed her. Mm. Now, there, there are people that are watching us right now, and they're sick, and they want to be healed. And you did not speak the name of the condition that they had. Is there hope for them? There certainly is. God is in the business of healing people of all, from all backgrounds, all walks of life. I don't care who you are. Realize that God loves you. And because He loves you, His mercy, His compassion, and His goodness, and His great power reaches out to touch you today. The fact there's people watching right now. You heard me talk about a little child that was sick. There's some viewers right now. Your children are sick. And the power of God right now, I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ that artistic condition. Right now, I, I speak to, to children right now who've got learning dysfunctions, ADD, dyslexia. There's an anointing right now, right now, flowing through this TV set. If you just lay your hands upon your children right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, children be healed by the power of God. What is really going on when you say, in Jesus' name? I notice you say that a lot. How come? What's going on in, in the invisible world? I believe the Bible, and I believe the Bible is not man's revelation, it's God's revelation. And the supernatural revelation that we have of the Bible tells us how God wants us to pray and the fact that He has given us the power and the right to use His name. All right, give me some specific scriptures to prove what you just said from the Bible. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, tells us that the name of Jesus Christ is above all other names. Mark chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, In my name lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. So the authority to heal is not from me, it's from God. I want you to realize this, and the viewers are watching, right, I'm not the healer. God is the one who heals. Jesus Christ is the healer today. The Holy Spirit is the one who heals, but He heals through faith in Jesus' name. And so as we exercise faith in Jesus' name and speak that name, the name of Jesus is more powerful than cancer. So, so what, in the invisible realm, what exactly occurs when you say the name of Jesus and put your hand on someone? What is actually happening? The name of Jesus Christ releases the power of God. The power of God through the Holy Spirit is so real that as we begin to exercise our trust, our belief, our faith in God's power and begin to speak the name of Jesus with faith. It does, I'm not talking about some kind of a religious ritual you just mm -hmm. say in Jesus' name. I'm talking about you have to have faith in that name. You have to release belief and faith in that name. And so when you speak faith in Jesus' name, the power of God is released to manifest miracles, deliverance, healing, and answers to prayer today. See, the wonderful thing about God, He's a God who hears our prayers and answers our prayers. Um, let me put you on the spot. Tell me one dramatic prayer that you prayed, that, not necessarily healing, personal, right. that God answered. All right, back, back in 1992, we were having some problems regarding, we just moved to the United States mm -hmm. from South Africa, and we were having some complications with our green card application. I mean, just a whole lot of bureaucracy and red tape. And so my wife and I, the Bible says in Matthew 18, that there's an anointing and agreement. There's, there's prayer power released when two agree. And so we brought the whole situation concerning a green card that was just seemed to be making no headway. We agreed in prayer on a Tuesday, Tuesday evening, and agreed in prayer together for the release of the power of God to bring us favor and cause the green card to come and the process to speed up and accelerate. The following week, we got a call from the INS. The immigration department said, we want to interview you. You've got the green card. Are you special? Is there something special about you that's causing these God to move on your behalf? Why is this? Everybody's special to God. God, God loves everybody. In fact, every viewer who's watching right now, I want to encourage you. If you're watching right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, God loves you. You have significance. That, 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 that let, candidly, it's a cliche almost. You really believe that? I do believe that because I know in my own life from personal testimony that when I came to Jesus Christ and I became a believer, He healed me of, a, of an asthmatic condition I'd had for 21 years. 
He delivered me from, from the addiction of cigarettes. Uh, so many things He set me free from. The, the Word of God tells us who the Son of God sets free is free indeed. Either Jesus can set you free or He can't. And so when you put your trust in Him and put your faith in Him, He's the real deal. He shows up, He comes on the scene, and He delivers. I like that. Jesus is the real deal. And you're going to see the real deal when we come back. I believe many of you are going to have manifestations of physical healings. I can't wait. Be right back. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I had a tearing of my thoracic aorta and was flown to a major medical facility. Statistically, only 6 in 10 survived this. I woke one night from a dream with angels surrounding me and singing. At that time, all my pain was gone. With faith and prayer, I have been healed. Three months later, the CT scan was negative. When your guests started playing music, I thought I misheard as the music seemed to have more than one instrument. I felt so much love, like liquid love. I never thought that that would be taken to the throne room of God through music. I have unexplainable joy, peace, happiness, and love. It's amazing. Sid, one morning while watching your show at Supernatural, you said somebody's hip has just been healed. After you said those words, I got up from the couch and discovered that my hip pain was gone. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. In case you missed that, a mensch is a human being. And as far as I'm concerned, I thought I was a mensch. I left my wife, I left my daughter, I left my job. I, I, I didn't care about anyone except me. And then I had an encounter with the devil. And I have since come to find out 